PlayStation E3 booth. So who you can oh. see again, so uh, Resident Evil 2 is very near and dear to tons of people's hearts. And just this first shot of the Raccoon City Police Department, like the huge open foyer, like like tons of nostalgia just like hit you. It's pretty crazy. Like not everything is exactly like where you remember it, but that's kind of intentional because this game isn't just a remake. It's a whole new game that we're building off of the foundation that the original game had built. So there's going to be a lot of familiar stuff, but there's going to be a lot of new stuff as well. So. And, and that's how you got to do it, yeah, right? I mean, it's been here. close to 20 years, hasn't it? Yep. Right. This game alone, 20 years. Wow. Does it make you feel old, Sid? I feel old when yeah, I look at that. That makes me feel a little old. No. <laughs> David, Marvin, you there? I found a way out. It's in here. So did you actually go back and re-watch the original and then like frame by frame decide what you wanted to keep in and what you wanted to update? De definitely, yeah. Some of them were like, are, are pretty faithful to the originals, but something like this back in the day on PlayStation, that it was uh, the graphic power, it's not quite the level of PS4 or PS4 <laughs> Pro just yet. A lot of the movements, characters jumping around, fully voiced stuff. Uh, it's a little bit more crude, but definitely classic. But some stuff is new, but uh, some of the originals are there as well. So a big change here is the fact that we're really playing the game. We're Leon Kennedy. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I think of Leon Kennedy, I think of Resident Evil 2, but I also think of Resident Evil 4. Yes. And you guys have opted for more of a Resident Evil 4 approach to the, uh, just the, uh, the controls. So yep. tell, tell me a little bit about that. Definitely. So the over-the-shoulder thing, we know it's uh, the original game with the fixed camera in the corner. Um, that's very, again, near and dear to people's hearts. But with the over-the-shoulder camera, we're, again, we're building a new game. This isn't a remake of the original. It is a full new game that we really want to push. And the idea of having over the shoulder, the pinpoint accuracy of really trying to take down zombies, it felt better for this experience. So that's where we went through. So. But the big difference is the uh, uh, it's less uh, shooter uh, elements compared to the uh, Resident Evil 4. Mm. This is more you know, like a Metroidvania style, uh, survival horror, you know, classic gameplay. Yeah. So we actually try to keep the, uh, the original you know, gameplay feel mm. uh, from you know, the original. So that's kind of you know, what we were trying to do uh, in this uh, new Resident Evil 2 as well. The lighting feels very similar too. Yes. Yep. Yeah, definitely one other thing is like, so to, to make it like, you know, people always see the over the shoulder first person think of Jesus. just like, you know, you're going to be running out the walls and doing backflips and things like that. It is definitely not like that at all. The zombies in this game are, they are tough. And not, not just like, you know, if you see one or two or three, like I got to look out. If you see one in a hallway and you can't get by him, like you have to you, you fear for your life type thing because you're probably going to die. So you've really <laughs> got to be careful with your ammo. And to confirm, these are zombies a la Resident Evil 2, yes. not Lost Plot. So these are, these are your T-Virus zombies. Right, right. right. Had to, just had to settle yeah. that one. <laughs> so Leon here is trying to save one of the uh, fellow RPD officers. Uh, it's not looking good, unfortunately. So. Oh, <laughs> that didn't go very well. Now, we know there's going to be some familiar faces in this as well. It's characters that we've seen in other games. We saw that in the uh, showcase asset mm -hmm. just last night. But uh, tell me a little bit about the approach to that. Definitely. So we've got, of course, like, not only do we have Leon. Leon has his own campaign. We also wanted to bring back uh, Claire Redfield. So she's not playable in this demo, but she, as well, is going to get her full playable campaign, too. Awesome. So, um, the rest of the characters are kind of, uh, we haven't really confirmed too much yet. So I advise right. you to go back and watch the trailer. You can probably kind of make some good guesses, I think, based on those, but uh, we'll leave it to your imagination. <laughs> awesome. This is cool here. This is super tense. So we're getting into here. So every time a zombie bites you, you really feel like you get that over-the-shoulder perspective really helps because you get to see the zombies. You really feel them kind of like bite to your neck just like that. Yeah. It kind of disorients you too when you get that, so you're spun around. It creates sort of a real sense of like, oh, crap, what's going on? A zombie is actually attacking me. And this is all running in the engine yeah, seen it on Resident Evil 7, right? It right. is. This is actually the, the RE engine. So the same game that powered RE7 is actually going to be running this game, too, as well. H, are you OK? You going to do this? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's <a> very <laughs> terrible. <laughs> so again, like, they are no joke. Like, you get bit once or twice, and it's, it's, you're almost done. So. Oh, really? OK. Yeah. Look at this, you know, like, restroom. We added the restroom. Yeah, so that was yeah. one thing that was really, uh, 
In the PS1 game, it was one of those ones. It's limitations yeah. back in the day, but there were actually no restrooms in the <laughs> original PlayStation. Uh, right. That's a good point, yeah, actually. Right? So in this demo, we wanted to make sure that we have a, uh, a fully functioning bathroom. We put a little treat inside there for you, a uh, first aid spray. That's a that's a back of box. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. If I've ever heard of one. I noticed he just picked up some first aid spray before. A lot of what I love about survival horror games is the limited supplies. You really have to like think things through. Is that an element that you guys are working with? Yeah. Those are the those are sort of like the emergency last minute things. But again, like it is it is really survival horror to its fullest. Like, you're going to need to conserve those. As you can see in his inventory there, he only had a handful of bullets. So if you run out of bullets, there's no, like, we did add certain things, like, you know, if you find a la RE7, some gunpowder and some other resources, you can make more. But for, if you're out, you're pretty much going to be out. So really wanted to drive home the survival aspect of this game. Is there a knife? Is, is that included? There is. So a little bit later, if we get far enough, we will show you the knife. It functions okay. a way similar to when we did the original uh, Resident Evil 1 remake. So instead of just being something that you use, and you can you can slash it to keep guys at bay, but these guys are ironclad, and that's generally <laughs> probably not the best idea. Yeah. If you do get grappled, you get the chance to uh, use it as sort of an emergency weapon to get rid of that zombie Got and it. get them off you. Cool. But if it's still, it does have a, a little bit of durability as well. So it. if it's still durable enough, you can actually pick the knife off, off the zombies that you just killed, get a little bit more out of it too. So interesting. What other sort of mechanical tweaks and changes have you are you guys implementing here that uh, longtime fans might notice? Definitely, Kanasan, you want to take this one? Well, yeah. So the uh, gameplay mechanics. So since then, we actually feature uh, now you know over the uh, shoulder camera view. So the um, we actually um, trying to uh, uh, put like more kind of like uh, intense uh, combat, you know, feel mm -hmm. uh, against the uh, zombies. So uh, and also the uh, the way you know like Leon is actually you know shooting is the kind of like more like natural uh, feel more close to the uh, like Resident Evil Seven kind of combat style. Mm. Yeah. There is some stuff a little bit later in the demo too where uh, it wasn't present in the original game where it's a little bit it kind of uh, Again, pushing that survival aspect of the game. You can find like wooden boards to board up windows oh, to choose whether you want to board up that one. If that zombie is a really problem for you, um, otherwise you can save it later in case something else comes up. But it really is about that choice of how do you want to play. That is uh, cool. That's something I've always wanted to see in more like zombie games. Is right. Yeah. You to, uh, fortify. Yeah. yeah what fortify I mean. stuff. Because that's like the first thing you're going to do, right? If you were in a real zombie sure. attack. everything up. And you're now, obviously, Sid and I are, are, are big Resident Evil fans. But for those out there that maybe haven't. You know, approach the franchise before or something. Do you feel no, like this is a good title to start with? Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, this this is almost the gen like Resident Evil 2 is obviously the second game in the franchise, but really is sort of the genesis of where a lot of the groundswell around the brand came up. So again, if if you haven't played this title before, the story is about Raccoon City is a midwestern town. A mysterious outbreak hits. Zombies are everywhere. It's Leon, the guy with the RPG vest on here. It's his first day on the job as a cop, and he's basically coming to work and. What happened? <laughs> There's zombies everywhere. He's finding his com comrades are in, basically going through hell. Um, and Claire Redfield, who is the other character in the game, she's a college student. She's looking for her brother Chris, who works in the special forces. Um, and they basically fates intersect, and you'll be able to sort of see each other's perspectives throughout the game. So, so now he's got the uh, uh, combat knife. Yes. From, uh, so here we have our knife. Yeah. <laughs> that we get from Marvin. Marvin, yes. There you go, kind of like the classic slash. <laughs> Using the knife always reminds me of back in the day, it's like you get a couple rounds inside the zombie, and then like just to make sure, you get a couple slashes on the ground. Because <laughs> half the time they'll come up and just like grab you as you walk by. This is not how I imagine it. So again, a lot of these rooms, especially this one too, it's like that door necessarily wasn't there in the first game or the original RE2, but this room is super iconic for a lot of reasons, but it's not quite the same as you might remember it, too. If you turn this corner in the original game, you might have remembered something crawling by that window. Uh, yeah. that's cert it's not there anymore, but it takes a lot of different forms later. So, yeah, we want to keep people on their toes. They expected that there, but we're going to move it because we don't want you to know everything that's yeah, going to Yeah, you can't up. have the dogs jumping out of the same window, yeah. right? Ari is all about jump scares and right. getting people off their seats. So, like, yeah. if they know everything that's coming, that's no fun. Now, I, I don't want you to spoil anything here, but, you know, I've played Resident Evil 2 quite a few times. Um, is there the same general sort of arc to the experience, or...? There is. So I'd say that the story on the whole, here's a, a great shot of... Oh, wow. Oh, the Ari Engine's uh, proudest work here. Uh, pretty nasty. Crazy. But yeah, so the story as a whole, like, in general, you'll see a lot of the same things be happening. But, again, it's, it's not exactly the same. So you'll see 
you know, characters that you might have just like talked with very briefly, you get a little bit more backstory into there. Places that you just walked by in downtown Raccoon City, you're going to get a chance to go in there and play a little bit more. So. And, and you had mentioned Claire will be a playable character. Will that sort of cross over sort of, they had some, the ability to sort of interact with each other's storyline a little bit in the original game. Right, from time to time. So it's, it's going to be slightly different because back in the day it was a, we call it a zapping system. You could play A and B scenarios, but we wanted to have each character have their own separate campaign. They certainly will be crossing over, but it's going to be, uh, you know, updated, modified for this new version of the game too. So awesome! This is looking great, guys. I'd love to sit here actually and do this for about another 15 or 20 minutes, but uh, <laughs> I think we actually got to get going, okay. Um, okay. which is a super bummer because it looks just awesome. <laughs> and this is one of my well, let's, get, let's, get, let's get this guy. Let's get, let's get him. First. He just wants some snacks, you know. That's right. <laughs> He's you just leave him be. That's fine too. You know? All leave right. him do his stuff. So. Very reluctantly, um, I will have to bid you farewell. Thank you so.